The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Reaper Apparel Company. Reaper Apparel offers a casual line of superb fit, finish, and comfort. We design for those who refuse to die slowly and choose to live untamed. For those who aren't afraid to face the dark, for the ones that thrive in it, and for those who can appreciate life through a grim lens. That's Reaper Apparel Company. Go to the link in the description of this episode, use the promo code Mike Bono, and get 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my own personal merch store, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. I have hats, I have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, water bottles, notebooks, you name it, I've got it. The description and the link for that will be in the description of this episode. Also, right now, if you use the promo code WELCOME, I will give you 5% off of your first purchase. That's the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Also, the Rod Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Tactical Brotherhood. All American Made Apparel, which helps support the Second Amendment. You can also find all this in the description of this episode with the link Tactical Brotherhood. Part of every proceed does go to helping veterans, as it is a very good cause. All American-made products made right here in Minnesota. Go and check them out. Use the promo code PATRIOT15 to get 15% off your purchase. Now, let's start the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. This is, as always, your host, Mike Bono. I have a great guest for us today. He is a comedian and a beard care connoisseur, and he has his own beard care line. Buddy Holly joins the show. Buddy, thanks for joining, brother. Thanks, brother. I uh, really appreciate you having me on. So. Hey, not a problem. Uh, first and foremost, beard care stuff is phenomenal. We're going to get into the comedy, but ever since you've yeah. sent me um, some stuff to, to use the beard care, like... I never thought I was going to be a beard, oil, bomb, wash kind of guy. Like, I never took care of it. I, I'm sold. Like, with, <laughs> with one little batch yeah. of sample stuff, man, I was right. sold. Dude, it's, it's, it's a wild game to be a part of. And, you know, honestly, I think that's what made comedy easy to transition to, you know, because when you're doing craft shows and stuff, you're really just interacting with people and trying to have a good time. And, yeah, you know, I... If you're laughing with somebody, you know, and it doesn't feel like a sales pitch, people are a lot more relaxed and they're receptive to the information. And uh, guys are really hard to get them to understand that, you know, you got to take care of yourself. And a lot of beard care is really just skin care. Um, you know, but taking care of your beard is really just, you know, trying to promote, you know, taking care of yourself. Yeah. Which I think a lot of guys struggle with. Yeah, for sure. I, I get told uh, probably 35 times a day from my other half <laughs> that, you know, um, right. I need to watch what I'm eating. I need to eat more vegetables. I need to yeah. do this. I need to do that. I need to watch my blood pressure. It's like, yeah, no, I I was 75. They're like, there's no way that <laughs> blood pressure's coming down any chance, anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I. I had, I had a, um, I was pretty strict on my diet for a while and out of nowhere, my body, like I can't eat like dark leaf, like dark, dark green vegetables anymore. Like it makes me like super sick. It hit me out of nowhere. See, same thing happened to my wife. She can't eat like lettuce or salad or anything like that. And it just came out of nowhere. And she loves salads. Like that's one of like the meals that we like to have is just make a big salad. And that's our dinner. It did messes her up. Yeah, dude, that's, I was, I was at an open or acoustic show, uh, supporting a buddy of mine and forgot all about it. Oh. And, and I like spinach. I really do. And I ordered a, I was trying to stay healthy. You know, we were at a bar and I was like, all right, I'm just ordering this, you know, this salad and I'm sitting there and like, it's like 20 minutes later. I'm like, I don't feel great. Like what's wrong with me? Like something, like something has just came over me and I feel terrible. And my other half looked at me and she looked down and she goes, Oh my goodness. That salad was like all spinach. And I'm like, 
Oh no! Oh, no. Like it was <laughs> terrible, man. It was like the worst of the worst. So. Yeah, I mean, but you did mention something though, you know, making people laugh. You yeah. know, and and your beard care company doing like these craft shows and stuff like that. I I, I work a sales job too. Comedy isn't the the main thing, and like I think I blew my boss's mind when they're like, "Well, what are you doing to sell like these higher ticket, these bigger?" buildings like what are you doing i was like i'm getting them to laugh and i'm bringing the barrier down like because everybody right. comes into any type of retail location with this mm-hmm. their guard up like i'm not getting sold sure. today blah 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 whatever it is and i just i make them laugh and i i work out material i'm not gonna lie like and i get more material yeah. from, from them like and as soon as they find out like oh he's a comedian too so like yeah, it, it it loosens the interaction up, but yeah, making people laugh is definitely something that I've always, always is. It's oh my god, if I could talk tonight, that'd be great. Expired to do, so yeah. Um, yeah I mean, what what got you into comedy? You know, uh, I I think every comedian I've met so far um, or had. I've looked into, I think everybody's dealt with some form of mental health issues or whatever. And it's realistically a coping mechanism, I think for, for a lot of, a lot of comedians and, you know, not that I feel like I had a traumatic life, but I mean, if, if we were to go through the timeline, you know, some of the stuff that was just my normal has always been like, Oh my goodness, do you need a hug? Well, it was just how I grew up, you know? And, uh, I make jokes uh, you know, about both my parents having MS and stuff and, and going through that, having a, a dad in a wheelchair. But it just made my life a little different. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I, I tell people I'm unfortunately witty. And they're like, what do you mean unfortunately? I'm like, well, it depends on what side of that wit you're on, you know. And yeah. some of the stuff that, you know, some of the stuff that I joke about or even say, I'm like, you – I'm hearing the joke for the first time when it slips out of my mouth. Like sometimes I don't filter it. And you know, it, it it was just something where if I love live entertainment in general, you know, with a name like buddy Holly, uh, I I always get a joke about, you know, that reference and stuff. And, uh, I'm a huge supporter of music. I, I, I do play more as a hobby, not necessarily something where I'm trying to go out and, and do anything, yeah. but I do it for myself. And as much as I love and support that, and I have friends that are doing great things with, with, with their bands and stuff. Um, those, those moments are, even if you see somebody pay top dollar to go see a, like a music event, everybody's on their phone and nobody's living in the moment and when you do comedy not necessarily where i'm at so far but you know at least for you know people way past my tenure right now the phones are put away you're in the moment and nobody's scrolling mindlessly and nobody's trying to film you know, or take pictures unless you're as pretty as Matt Rife. I mean, nobody's going to well, do that. Well, I mean, me. yeah, if, but, if it's yeah. that pretty, the, the camera's right. You know, <laughs> there's a reason I have a beard. You know, it's not <laughs> it's not because I have a great jawline. And um, but people live in the moment; they're in that moment with you. And if they had a bad day, a bad week, or whatever, and within whether it's a five minute set um, or somebody's up there doing, you know, an hour. And those people are enjoying themselves and they're laughing. They're at least finally, you know, connecting with other humans outside of a screen. I got to say, that was the realest answer from any comedian that I've ever asked that that answer, that question to is, you know, why comedy? And I appreciate it. <clears throat> like, because I've always said that, you know, laughter is the best medicine. Mm-hmm. And... I I believe that wholeheartedly, and you're right. And I think you know when you're at a comedy show, you don't see people on their phones. I mean, maybe somebody might take a quick video of it or something like that, or maybe take a quick picture of where they're at or anything like that. But for the most part, they're engaged into the show. 
which I appreciate. I've been doing comedy 11 years now. It'll be 12 years in uh, November of this year. So, awesome. uh, yeah, been, been a journey, man. Like it's been, right. it's been, it's not always been fun. I'll, I'll yeah. admit it. I'll be the first to say it. It's not yeah. always been fun. And uh, But I think, you know, people, when they get on their phones at a comedy show, they know the comedian is now honed in on them. And For sure. I think a lot of it, it stems from a lot of people be like, I don't want to become the butt of a joke from this mm-hmm. professional shit talker who's just gonna, yeah, right. who's just going to ruin my night. And like I've 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 started so many shows uh, saying like, you know, I love hecklers. I do uh, mainly right. because I have a microphone. You are all in proximity to this speaker system, and I will ruin your night. Like, right. please, by all means, if you think you have something to say, you will see how quick witted I am. Because a- after almost twelve years of comedy, there's no filter from my head to my mouth. If I think it, it's coming out of my mouth, and gets me in trouble a lot of the time. Uh, <laughs> especially at my day job, I have to really fight to not be that asshole because I hear stupid questions on a daily basis. Daily yeah, basis, I hear the dumbest shit like you will ever, ever think to say. Like, I, quick little story here, but I, I, I worked for Spectrum in their call center, in the billing mm-hmm. center, for not that long. It wasn't that great of a job. Uh, but 100 calls a day, and I actually had somebody call in, and they were like, I'm just trying to pay my bill. Great. How would you like to pay? We can take a card or a check over the phone. And she, he goes, well, I want to pay cash. I said, that's great. You have four stores within a 10-mile radius of you. Just go into one of them. You could pay it there. He goes, why can't I pay over the phone with you? I said, I said, I said I'm, I'm sorry. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you plan to do that? Sir, you're in Colorado. I'm in I'm in Ohio. How do you plan to pay me cash over the phone? He goes, Well, can't I just fax it into you? <laughs> this sure counterfeiting. This fucking guy thought he could put money into a fax machine and it was going to magically travel across the country and end up in my hand. That I, 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 I'm not a hundred percent certain his buddy didn't convince him to go, Hey, we're going to fuck with this guy on the phone today. I want you to call and try to pay with cash. It, it, I'm really hoping that was the reason, but I've heard so many questions and shit yeah. like that, that it's like, there's no way that was, that wasn't a serious question. Cause we went back and forth for like 10 minutes. So finally I was just like, sir, I can't help you. And I just hung up on him. Like yeah, I got, wild. I got in so much trouble for hanging up on him. But I was like, listen to the tape. They're all recorded. I, w- I think I was pretty calm for the most part. Somebody's there. I mean, you can, it's fine. We're not that serious of a podcast there, man. It's fine. What's that? Yeah. I- uh, you know, ball and chain rolling in, you know. I got it. No worries. Uh, so. We got to work together uh, briefly uh, yeah. Black Friday at uh, Towns Family Billiards in, in Newark, uh, Ohio. I mean, yeah, that was that was a fun show. Like I've never done a Black Friday show, and I was I was nervous that there wasn't going to be a crowd. Like I thought people were going to be shocked yeah. out, but it was it was an awesome show, and I and I loved it. And some of your material, like where do you come up with your material? We'll be back after a quick break. Big labia energy. What if I eat a little cheese every day? <laughs> Just keep it. It's like I have a tolerance. Yeah, for cheese. Good Same job with cats. Up your tolerance. Like if I pet a cat every day for the first week or two. I thought you were going to say if I eat a cat a little bit every day, <laughs> starting at the tail I mean, and just ate a little bit, then I'd be fine. But if I didn't eat a cat for three months. I would totally start at the face. Why yeah. would you start at the tail? If someone put a gun to my head and said, eat this cat. I'm trying to think of we're an acceptable talking about scenario. a feline, right? <laughs> oh, did you think I was talking about pussy? Maybe. It could go there. I don't want to eat a cat. I want to eat a pussy. <laughs> Uh, so I mean, a lot of like, at least right now, what I've, what I have in my sets is 
just stuff that I've experienced. And, you know, thankfully my other half is uh, a roll with the punches type person, oh. man. She's, I'm very thankful. Uh, it, it takes a special woman to deal with my antics for sure. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and I have, you know, like most millennials, I'm late life diagnosed ADHD and you know, my my brain has wandered at the wrong times during certain certain activities that they shouldn't. And you know, she's like, "What are you laughing at right now?" And I'm like, "I think I just wrote a bit in my head." <laughs> and she's like, "Really? Like we're having sex right now, and you're thinking of comedy?" <laughs> and I go, "I sure am." Like it, at least it's a joke about you. I mean, it's you know not anything else. And, um. You know, a lot of it is just like that quick wit where in the moment where I'll say something or whatever and I get a good pop and um, it's kind of like, you know, let's, the two most recent things that she's went through is, you know, um, she got a boob job uh, about two years ago and then um, recently had that inner stem uh, device put in essentially a pacemaker for her bladder and... Okay. You know, I, I got those bits about that, and you know, as I thought of those, she said, uh, she just dropped her head on my chest, and she goes, "Everybody's going to know I have a pacemaker for my bladder." And I go, "If you don't want me to say it on the stage, I promise I won't." And she goes, "It's fine." Yeah. And I go, I got your blessing like that. I mean, it was reluctant, but it was a blessing. And yeah. I'm not looking back because, no. I mean, you get, you they, get they the okay. Well. You get that okay. Yeah. And yeah, yeah there was no, there's no second chance or nothing like that. So, you know, a lot of the stuff is just, you know, either I've riffed with her or, you know, I've, I've joked about my life experiences and just how I've responded to them and the stuff that pops into yeah. my head when, when we're going through it and now I just kind of cleaned it up to where the delivery, you know, there's not as much, uh, set up to it. You know, I don't, that's the one thing that I, I've, I've been really working on is not wasting a lot of unneeded details to, to make a joke work. Um, so that's just been one of the things that, you know, I've, I've done. And like I said, humor is a coping mechanism for me. And <clears throat> if I deal with something that most people would be like, Oh, well, it is me. I'm here making a joke about it first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe you have to find the funny in any situation, regardless of yeah. what it is. I, I've told the story on here plenty of times, but you know, we, we made a joke out of my grandfather's funeral. Yeah. Um, and I say grandfather, I, I didn't really know. It was my mom's real dad. I didn't really know him until I was like 25, 26 years old. He left and I, I never known him. And, you know, I mean, it's, but still you're losing a family member. Right. And, but we made, we, uh, it was my grandfather on my Italian dad's side, like uh-huh. off the boat, doesn't wear yeah. his hearing aids, doesn't know he's yelling, and he thinks he's whispering. Um, but for, for, for the new listeners out there, what he said was, is he leaned into my wife, thinking he was whispering, no more than 20 feet away from the casket. And he goes, I don't know who's going to come to this. He was kind of an asshole, and nobody liked him. Talking about the deceased. And like he was, I, I really wish I was yelling for effect, but that is exactly how right. loud he was talking <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> and yeah. it, it just like him and my grandmother got into like, they've been married 67 years argument. Like, you know, like they've just had enough of each yeah. other, like in the middle of the funeral home. And we told everybody that story that came. Yeah. And, what, That's fantastic. What should have been a sad day, <laughs> we laughed right. through the whole fucking thing. And my wife still laughs about it to this day. That yeah. was, I think, two years ago now. Yeah. And, yeah, she laughs through the whole thing. And it, 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 you can either let life define you or yeah. 
you can make a career out of it. Like you said earlier, you know, comedy, you know, for a lot of comedians, uh, I could either pay for a therapist or I can get on stage and just unload my issues onto a crowd full of unwilling people knowing they're going to hear some shit. Right, which, I mean, you know, if if one bit connects with somebody, it just makes it a little bit better for them that day, awesome. And, you know, for me right now, uh, is you know, as, as new as I am to this, I've really struggled with the idea of like trying to be clean. And it's such a, a broad term, you know, it's everybody has a different, you know, view on what they define as clean, I think. And, um, I don't think it's just specific to family friendly, um, you know, for that, but I, I don't want to get on a, on stage and grab a mic and not sound like I'm authentic. You know, you mentioned right. being in sales and my day job is very sales oriented. And, you know, I just, I just celebrated, you know, nine years there and the customers that, that I've, that I've maintained and have followed me the whole way through up until they've got rid of the car it's, it's because I think I'm authentic with them. You know, it's just, I, I don't walk, I, I, I've never tried to communicate with, with one of them about their car and not be honest about what I think is happening or, or what's going on. And, you know, jokes get floated in here and there. And, you know, just, you, you have to be a person, you know, the moment somebody thinks you're reading from a script, they lose trust. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, even with writing, you know, I've seen so many different forms that people say they, they do and they write. And, um, you know, for, I think, uh, Gabriel Iglesias, he, he's never written a joke down. Um, yeah. and you know, for me, like when I did the town show, um, I did like, I recorded myself on a 10 minute speed run of like what I had the goal of doing and I wanted to try to flow and I I didn't write it down and I sure didn't write it down verbatim because I'm not going to remember something verbatim. You know, it's going to be very, it's going to be very similar. It's going to be very close. You know, the punch is probably going to be the same. And the setup is probably going to be about 80%, you know, <clears throat> there. But I just don't, I don't possess the ability to write something down and remember it exactly as I wrote it. See, you, I think you have a leg up from when I started. Because when I first started, I was literally word for word writing down yeah. everything I wanted to say on stage. And then I quickly realized it's not what I wrote down. Like that's, I yeah. mean, it's close. It's in the ballpark. Like you said, probably yeah. about 80% there. To now, I write down the premise of a joke, and I just I riff off of that. I'm way better off the cuff than I am. I don't even want to say scripted because I hate that word, but like a, yeah, a scripted written joke. Especially since I'm I'm known as a storyteller, or as I was dubbed almost twelve years ago, uh, the angry white comic, um, <laughs> <laughs> because I go on these long filled rants on stage because I. Buddy of mine asked me to do an open mic night, and you know, like he hounded me for months, and I finally broke down and got on stage. And he didn't have any time limits when he first started doing. He was like, "Just go up there when you run out of jokes, you can get off stage." Like that's yeah. fine with me. And I did twenty minutes my first time, and I didn't even realize I was up there for twenty minutes. Yeah, just it's awesome bitching about my day, and like. <laughs> <laughs> And lo and behold, twelve years later, we're we're still trying to make a career out of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I mean, again, it's therapy, you know. And I, I don't know, like it. The comedy, the the thing really tracked, and I've been I've been very thankful. I I would probably say the majority of the comedians that I've had the the pleasure of, you know reading and networking with and actually really talking to i've been very thankful for them and you know this all started from um essentially because of the podcast um 
uh, Bert Kreischer, Tom, they do like experiences type stuff for each other for birthday gifts. Yeah. And a buddy of mine ran with that. Um, so this would have been two birth, yeah, two birthdays ago. He said, I have something I want to get you for your birthday, but I need to know that you commit eight weeks. It's on a Saturday. And I go, okay. Like I looked at my calendar. I go, I got it. And so then for my birthday, he goes, Hey, uh, I got you improv classes for your birthday. <laughs> and I said, all right. Uh, what I didn't know is it reminded me of just, I think as we get older and we get numb to society, we kind of forget how to just have fun and be creative and just, you know, kind of just be playful even with other adults and an improv really brought that out in my my second week there um another good comic friend of mine um she goes by uh the succubus of satire mary beth i don't know if you had a chance to uh, uh, yeah. chat with her yet but she's yeah. been on destin's podcast and she's a phenomenal human and she goes buddy i need to get you to an open mic and i go eh, i don't know like i don't right now i'm just trying to enjoy what this is i'm not trying to look you know much past what we're doing right now and so i did that and you know here we are the follow-up to that was you know i tried to figure out how to be i i wanted to try to figure out a way to get him something that did at least something beneficial for him and i knew that you know improv classes was going to be for him kind of thing and i didn't want to obviously get him the same thing he got me right you know and I'm like, well, I mean, he's one of those, like, you know, wants to aspiring to be outdoorsy type guys. And he had recently bought a compound bow. And I'm like, well, I'll get you archery lists. <laughs> Here I am thinking I'm going to be awesome, right? Like, hey, I got you. I texted his wife first. I'm like, hey, is he going to be able to do this? Like, however many Sundays this is. And she goes, yeah. Uh, that's fine. So then I confirmed with him, can you do this? He goes, yeah, I'll do it. Like, awesome. All right, man. Happy birthday. Here's these archery classes. The first day he texts me, dude, what did you get me into? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, man, it is like two lesbians and a bunch of kids. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you got this white Harambe like built dude. Like he just looks like a silverback gorilla. And I'm like, bro, I'm so sorry. Like, I I didn't mean for that. Like, it wasn't a joke. Like, I, I was trying to be sincere. And he uh, he stuck it out. He wrote it through. And they ended up letting him bring his compound bow. And by the end of it, he goes, I did get some great information out, out of it. I did learn some stuff. And I'm like, and I even just texted him here recently, to tell, or told him here recently, because we actually worked together, too. I told him, I said, man, like, I, I can't thank you enough for what that has done for me so far. Like, I don't know where this path is taking me, uh, but I've had enough things happen to me since I've started this um, that I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to right now. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, every, I think every comic goes through this lull, especially where I, I guess where we're at. You know, we're still the up and coming uh, comics and all that, but you know, you grind so hard and trying to make a career out of this. Every comic has this is like, well, is this really for me? Type of thing is like, is this something I really want to keep beating my head against the wall moment? And it, it's always when I'm sitting down, finally relaxing for a minute and watching TV with my wife, and then all of a sudden, something happens on TV and something comes out of my mouth. And she looks over at me and just starts dying laughing. And mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to yeah. make people laugh. And that happens more often than I would like to admit. Uh, <laughs> but she is my my joke tester, if you will. Like, I run I everything by her, whether it's about her or not. Yeah. Um and I I now know after nine years of being with her like how to 
how to judge where where to put the joke into the set. And if she laughs, yeah. it's, it's a good joke. It's probably an opener. If she looks at me and goes, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" That's a closer. Like that's yeah. that's that's my new closer. That is exactly what that yeah. is. And there's sometimes like. I keep I keep saying like I'm going to bring her to an open mic and just force her to go on stage, yeah. Because she is quicker than I am when it comes to comebacks and yeah. being quick witted. And she's like, "But I can't write anything down." I was like, "That's the beauty of it. Just go up there, pick somebody out in the crowd, and roll with it, and people will eat it up." Man, that was an open mic that I just did, and it's one of those things where. You know, you never know what to expect. I haven't done a lot of open mics. And, you know, I feel like I do get a little bit of grief for that, by the way, um, lot, from other a, comics. A lot of comics will tell you you have to go to you have to go to these open mics to work yeah. out material. Yeah, hitting a couple here and there, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been in this 12 years. You know, unless it's like in my backyard, yeah. I'm not... Wasting my time and energy on an open mic at this point in time in my career. Yeah. Yeah, like, dude, for me to hit an open mic, like, I got to either know that I have nothing going on or, like, really plan it. Because, you know, being in Newark, like, we don't really have an open mic. And for me to go to Columbus, if I'm lucky enough to get a bucket, like, one of the first open mics I did, or or they just put a bucket at the end of the show. And I didn't go on to like twelve thirty, one o'clock in the morning. And then I turned around and had to open the shop at seven thirty in the morning. I'm like, this is rough. Like yeah. I man, like I can't I, I'm just not built for that. You know, I gotta actually interact with, with the public the next day and be, you know, <laughs> a, a genuine human with some of these people. And uh I'm like I said, I'm I'm not a morning person. I've had a customer call me out like, You're a completely different person in the afternoon. I'm like, Yeah, I finally woke up. Like, you know, I'm not, you don't want to talk to me before 8 a.m. unless you have to. Like, right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a bear in the morning too, as well. Yeah. Like, unless I have my coffee in me, like, you're not going to want to talk to me right now. Like, yeah. even waking my son up, like he gets one, one nice, come on, bud, time to get up. You got to get ready for school. <laughs> After that, if I have to come up and walk up 13 steps one more time to wake your little ass up, like, I say little. He's almost as big as me, if not bigger, and he's 15. I'm going to be 15 here in a couple months, but still. Like, it's, like, after that, like, I'm coming in, like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and dropping elbows on him to wake him up. Like, dude, I said get up once. Like, that, you get one nice one. Like, you know this. (laughs) After that, I'm not. I'm going to get progressively meaner as the morning goes on. Like and that's getting up at six a.m. every day to get him up and yeah. moving. It, yeah, coffee is a godsend for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I love, I love my caffeine for sure. I, uh, yeah, that's how. That was one of the things that made me realize that I probably had ADHD was. Uh, I started kind of finding stuff out about it, you know, and like looking into it. And the doctor's like, how many energy drinks are you drinking a day? I go, too many. That's why we're here talking about this. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, you're self-medicating. I'm like, really, doc? Like, you, you didn't think I didn't have an idea? Like, <laughs> I kind of figured this out now. Like, That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you mean you... Wait, you're not drinking it because you're tired? I'm like, no, I found out it slows my brain down. Like, it's a weird feeling. Yeah. Yeah, my my son was diagnosed with ADHD, and we found out that sometimes we got to fight fire with fire, and we got to give him caffeine to to even him out. Yeah. Dude, it's a it's a wild ride some days, man. And, like, you know, it's 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 awesome that, like, I don't, have to like take you know medicine for it every day if I don't want to but like the days that I know I gotta be like you know a productive member of society like I can't I can't go out there and, and just you know run off the cuff with it I can't like it's it's a lot of stuff gets lost yeah absolutely absolutely yeah 
especially like in, in my line of business. I mean, I'm dealing with thousands of dollars of sheds and buildings. Like one little screw up, and I could cost the customer a good bit of money, or I can cost myself a good bit of money by missing something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's right. it's something that it's just like, yeah, I need to be on it today. I need to be on. We need we need an extra cup of cowboy blend for me today, and, and yeah. the Bono's Brew Cowboy Blend that. We'll take the enamel off your teeth. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's strong stuff. Like I I like a strong cup of coffee. I, I took a sip of it when we first came out with the cowboy blend and uh, looked at my wife. I went, "This will put hair in your chest." I'm just letting you know that now. Like this is this is good coffee. Like this is this is. Man, I feel like if you drink it, you might smell like uh, like that brute aftershave and Marlboro Reds. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Right. <laughs> that's that's actually what it smells like when you open up the package. It, it's not coffee. It's 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 leather and marbles. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, man. That's I. Uh, I remember when I got into cold brew, and that was wild at first. Like for me, like just a really strong cup of cold brew, like hit me the first time, and I was just bouncing. Like yeah. just running, I'm like, this is terrible. Like, the, I don't think I'm supposed to feel like this right now. Like, I think yeah, that was that was pre diagnosis, and like, it actually hit me. I'm like, is this how people feel when they like drink caffeine? Because like, this is wild. Yeah. Like the 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 craziest thing is is my wife brought, bought me this creamer from Dunkin' Donuts, and it's just called Extra Extra. It has sugar and creamer mixed in. Okay. Milk. I was like, cool. Saves me a step in the morning. I don't have to worry about putting sugar, then coffee, then creamer. Like, it's all just coffee and then add the creamer. Well, kind of like what you were just saying, this stuff wires me for sound. And my wife can always tell, like, on Sundays when she's sleeping in, my body just at this age is just like, hey, it's 6 a.m. You got to take a piss. Time to get up. Like, that's my only day to sleep in cool i'm up at the same exact time i am every day so i always have two cups by the time she gets up and i am bouncing off the fucking wall she was like you had two cups of extra extra this morning didn't you i was like yeah with cowboy blend too that makes it even worse Uh, like it's just dude it's it's a crazy ride i know what i know what i'm ordering we get off this podcast like yeah (laughs) absolutely dude i'm telling you like that is we have like every flavor under the sun, and I even I even have pumpkin spice. I know it's not pumpkin spice season, but I still yeah. carry it. I st- it's still it's still on the store. You can still get it for my basic white people out there. And I say white people because hey. it's not white girls anymore that are drinking it. I know a lot of dudes yeah. like, oh, I need a pumpkin spice. I'm like, what did you just say to me? Like, yeah. <laughs> did you just say that out loud to another man? Like, <laughs> you need a, <laughs> you, you need a pumpkin spice? Like. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm a sucker for pumpkin spice season. I have a, uh, a beard oil. It's called Hashtag Basic. And people, like, at first, they're like, oh, is this just, like, a regular, like, unscented beard oil? I'm like, no, you need to smell this. Like, this is, this is, is it, a good is pumpkin, pumpkin spice. spice. Yeah, it's pumpkin spice, dude. Like, it's it's great. It's fantastic. I, I got a lady that catches me at the same show every year. And she buys like six of them. She goes, "Do you have basic?" I'm like, "Of course I have basic. Of course. It's pumpkin spice season. Like, it's <laughs> we're going into this." And she goes, "I need six of them." I'm like, "What do you need six for?" And she goes, "I put them in my diffuser." I'm like, "No shit." Like, huh. all right. We'll be back after a quick break. I'm comedian David Race in Los Angeles. I host a celebrity film paranormal talk show like no other monstrosity has great guests answering weird questions you won't believe the combo of celebrities and paranormal experts who've been on this show i guarantee you'll like monstrosity or you get your time back go to monstrositypodcast.com right now and take a look I now know what I'm ordering this Christmas. Like, this is uh, Thanksgiving yeah, Christmas. Dude, it's, dude, it's, dude it's, it's, it's pumpkin. It's got nutmeg. It's vanilla. Like, it's it's all the right spices, you know, to give, like, 
not just like that pumpkin vibe. You know, it's it's a good seasonal scent. Like it's fantastic. I'm, I'm definitely like it's it smells like you're about to go pick apples for sure like i'm definitely gonna have to try that that's a hundred percent i i now know yeah like you said with the cowboy blend like i'm yeah i'm getting it i'm, I'm getting yeah. me some Dude, some basic the, uh I, i'm pretty sure i sent you the one called gunmetal yeah gunmetal uh, so i did when i brought that out that came out on a whim uh, my, I, I had to pay the ADHD tax, uh, leading up to that show. Uh, it's, it's my favorite show to do. It's called the Backwoods Fest in Thornville. Um, and I procrastinated and forgot to order some, some of my bottles and I go, Hey, I ordered these like a week ago. Like they haven't shipped yet. What's going on? Like, Oh yeah, that, that was a too big of an order. Like it's not going to be shipped um until we get the order from our supplier and i'm like oh that's not going to work what do i need to do and she goes well i can cancel the order and then you can just place another order i'm like can i come pick up and they're like yeah that's an option so i drove to cleveland to go pick up for my supplier because i do try to use other ohio-based businesses to you know get all my stuff and as i'm in there i'm like looking for a couple different things i'm like you know this would go i think really well so i get the stuff that now became gunmetal and the first day i came out dude it sold out and throwback and scholar was like my bread and butter like best two sellers and i mean they were so closely you know tied together um i came out with gunmetal we we took a load of them in and i sold all of them on friday i'm like i've never had one cent sell out in the day i'm like this is wild so i go back and i make like as many as we can and we sold all of them on saturday i was like holy shit what is going on with this and i didn't have any for sunday and i had people like going hey people told me i need to come get gun metal i'm like well i'm out and it's not going to be here until like wednesday or thursday so i can make more for the next show uh but i had a lady smell it and she looked at me and she goes that'll get me pregnant and i go please stay on that side of the table <laughs> like i can't i can't no stay over there don't dude women are so aggressive with beards like i can't tell you how many people like the the silver lining to me for covid was people stopped touching my face like (laughs) well you i mean you do have that that big zz top beard like it's hard not to want to touch it i'm not gonna lie to you even as a man like yeah i dude i can't tell you how yeah but i mean yours are short dude it's like velcro don't get too close yeah um you know but uh which koozie do you have um Uh, I have the uh, stroke it like you mean it. Yeah, so that came from a lady uh, aggressively grabbing my face. Um, so I'm doing a show, and I'm still pretty fresh, and I don't really have merch or anything yet. And this lady, like, sees me and beelines to my booth to where it's like, am I about to get my ass kicked? Like, what's going on? Like, she's coming in hot. And she doesn't even, like, introduce herself. I don't know her at all and she comes around my table and she goes i just gotta know and grabs my beard and i go damn lady at least struck it like you mean it like <laughs> you know you're coming in hot like that so i was like oh that's that's merch so yeah that's... you know we uh that uh and plus with you know buddy's beard care the acronym there you know we we ran with all the innuendos and stuff and uh oh yeah I've been, I've enjoyed it. You know, we, we hold signs and stuff to try to get people laughing and carrying on. Like, uh, one of my, uh, my popular sign is, uh, if you beard it, she will come. Uh, and, that's a good one. Dude, there has been uh, one of my buddies that helped with most of the shows. I've had some old ladies say some stuff to him in passing that like, he just turns and looks at me and he is beat red. Like these old ladies are embarrassing the hell out of him. So, um, but yeah, man, like just, I, I try to keep, I I try to make sure anything that I'm putting out for the beard care, Kyle, even like, you know, we do with comedy, you know, there's a lot of parallel thinking, I think in certain aspects, but I try to make sure it's something that organically came to me because I get people to send me stuff all the time where it's like, Hey, this would be really funny on a shirt. I'm like, yeah, but like that didn't naturally occur to me. And like, there's somebody else already putting that on everything. Like, I don't want my brand washed down with something everybody else is doing. 
Yeah, I've uh, with my merch store, the the stupid should hurt merch store uh, that I have stems off of my stupid question joke, you know, and I, I do think yeah. that stupid should hurt. Um, I I try to come up with you know funny slogans like we just came out with our St. Patrick's Day collection for okay, for this year, and I know this probably isn't going to air till after St. Patrick's Day, but still. Um, one of the, one of the slogans that I came up with was, um, like what drinking is my job, obviously for that one. But then there was another one that on the front, it says, I'm here to drink beer and kick ass and I'm all tired out of kicking ass. Like, (laughs) like, and uh, yeah, as much as I hate to say it, my 15 year old came up with that. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I was sitting here. It was a Sunday. It's normally where I like to sit and do a little bit of, a little bit of work on the merch store and try to think of like slogans for new designs and stuff like that. And he came up. He's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm, I'm trying to think of new slogans for a St. Patrick's Day line. I got to get this out pretty quick. St. Patrick's Day is going to be here before." I even know it, so I gotta I gotta think of something funny, and I need a catchy line. He goes, "What about um? I'm here to kick ass and drink beer, and I'm all out of beer. Like it was, just, like, yeah. uh, I'll switch that up a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, change yeah. up a little. But, yeah, you don't yeah. get beat up. Like I do. I love I love funny apparel and stuff like that. You know, and um, I some of it I. I've realized like some of the shirts and stuff that I've bought over over the years, it's like, hey, this was really funny to me, but like I'm not either trying to get my ass kicked or I don't want to deliver a message that I I, I joke a lot, you know, to where sometimes I'll say something just for the for the shock and awe of it anyway. Oh yeah. And you know, I have no problem arguing with anybody about anything yeah and sometimes if i know you're irritated with what we're arguing about <laughs> even if i'm wrong or don't believe it if it's firing you up i'm probably going to lean into it harder uh i love doing that with like stuff like politics and oh, yeah. you know what i mean it, like it's... i don't i don't care what side of the fence you're on but if if you're that passionately upset over somebody just voicing an opinion i have no problem making you think i lean the other way just to piss you off and I, I I'm just really selective now on some of the shirts and stuff that I wear just because, I, you know, I, I've had interactions where it's like, yeah, I, I think I brought that on myself. Yeah, yeah. Like, there was some, like, I had it typed out to put onto the shirt and get ready to hit, like, yeah, submit that. And I looked at it and it was like, I'm going to get either my ass kicked or whoever wears this shirt is going to get their ass kicked. I can't, I can't in good conscience put this on a shirt. Like, so, I, like uh, I've had people my, come up to me. I was wearing your shirt that you you sent me. The size does matter. Yeah. And uh, they they looked at me and they're like, "Oh, does it?" I was like, "It's it's for a beard." Like you see the beard care company. Like it's, yeah. it's I'm, I'm I'm supporting one of my one of my fellow comedic buddies here. Like yeah, and, yeah. But yeah, size does matter. You know, <laughs> just keep it edging it in a little bit more. Right. You know that's. It's like one of the things where, you know, there's always there's always a joke somewhere. And, you know, the reason that I just kind of left the, the BBC like kind of out there in the open with it is because there's just so many entertaining jokes with that, in my opinion. Yeah. And um, one of two things have happened with the shirt that I used to have. Um, it didn't sell as hot as I wanted it to for me to lug around a bunch of merch. Uh, to all the shows, but uh, I had a shirt that said "Ladies Love," and then and beside it was just the the beard with the BBC, BBC. next to it, so it's like right there. And I had this guy come up to me. He goes, "Dude, I was getting gas in Alabama." I go, "Okay." He goes, "I'm wearing your shirt." I'm like, all right, tell me what happened. He goes, "This big black dude comes up to me. And he just..." He looks puzzled. I'm like, all right. He goes, he asked me really aggressively, what did my shirt say? 
And the guy's like all timid. He goes, ladies love BBC. And he said, the dude's demeanor changed. He's like, I know that's right. And got all hyped up and started high fiving <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Like, why couldn't that happen to me? Like, yeah. where, where are my fun interactions with the shirts I put out? Like, I right. want that for me. Like, I'm jealous it didn't happen to me. 100%. And I, uh, the, the second thing that happened was, uh, <laughs> one of my cousins goes to a very rural school, like drive your tractor to school type place, right? For, you know, on certain celebration days. And the kid is just a specimen of a human. Uh, he's 15 and wears like a size 16 shoe. Like, yeah. uh, and he's mixed. And he texts me. And I'm at, a, I'm at a craft show. And he goes, I need a shirt. I'm like, you need a shirt? I'm like, okay. I'm like, which one do you need? He goes, do you have a ladies love BBC shirt. And I go, yeah, what size you need, man? He goes, I need a three X. I go big bet. I think I'm pretty sure I got one left. Like I'll bring it to you. I drive past your house on my way home from the show. And so I get there and I was like, Hey, like, why do you like all of a sudden like need this shirt? Like so aggressively, he goes, I got suspended from school. I go this. And honestly, like this kid, is the sweetest kid the the definition of a gentle giant great kid and i go what happened he goes i said the n-word and i'm like wait a minute they suspended a black kid for saying the n-word and he goes Mm -hmm. yeah and i go i mean i kind of see it but like i i don't know if i'd have died on that hill right and I go, but I got a hoodie for you too. So I gave him the size doesn't matter hoodie. And I said, I need you to listen to me. If you get any grief for the apparel, because obviously, you know, the innuendo's there. I said, if you get any grief for the material, you just got to stick to your guns of it's my cousin's company. Yeah. And it's a beard care company. Like there's no, this isn't a dick joke. This is, they're talking about a beard. And so it finally happened. One of the teachers goes, you need to take that shirt off. And he goes, why? I know what that means. Take the shirt off. And he goes, it's a, it's a beard care company. Like it's my cousin's company. And she's like, yeah, funny, haha. Like, no, it's not. And so he turns around, and that sure had my logo huge on the back. And I mean, that kid's a walking billboard. Right. Like, I love him for it, you know. And so she's like, "Yeah, whatever. Like, that better be a real company." And he goes, "Well, he sponsors the youth football team." Oh. So, <laughs> like, I'm I'm one of the school sponsors too. I'm like, so you uh, <laughs> you want to upset me? I send the school money. Like, yeah. That's. Something that will never happen with my merch store. The stupid yeah. shit hurt merch store is never going to yeah. sponsor any. Yeah. <laughs> any well, it's programs. like the, it's like it's like that TikTok dude, um, bar none. Yeah. I don't remember his name, but like you know the GFC stuff and how all the kids were wearing his merch and he started calling it the Great Friends Club. Yeah. You know, so I get fucked cunt. You know, and just riffing with it, I'm like, man, that is such a great like marketing thing for him. Like I. I and I'm a sucker for great marketing. Like, I love it. I, I do it all the time with the stupid shit hurt because I just put the SSH on yeah. Yeah. my hats and everything like that and on all the tags and logo is SSH. And a lot of time people come up to me and they just go, shh. And at first I'm like, fuck are you talking about? And they're like, your, your hat, it says shh. I was like, no, 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 no. That stands for stupid shit hurt. I'm like, oh, I thought it stood for a sexy, sultry hunk. Like, you know, they say stupid shit like that to me. Like, I was like, it, it can mean whatever you want it to mean. Like, for it's, sure, it's hundred percent up to interpretation, but it definitely doesn't mean shh. But I mean, I think stupid should shush. So no, see, I, I mean, I've said it on stage. You know, like I, I said, I think stupid should hurt, and I'm not talking about killing anybody. I'm not that yeah. that type of person. I just want them to stub their toe and bend their little toe ninety degrees the wrong direction. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> That's where I'm at, or like hit their shin off of a tailgate or a hitch or something. Like, 
you need to know some pain when you do something stupid. And I, I I'm no, like, I, I'm no stranger to do. I do stupid shit all the time. Yeah. And it's like instant karma for me. Like, ever since I started this merch store, anytime I do anything stupid, like, I'll hit my head off of something because I'm six foot five. So, like, there's no way. Problems I don't have. Yeah. Like, and we. <laughs> Real quick story that we'll, we'll have to we're running down near the end of the episode here, but I, we bought a fixer upper house uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I, I was looking at my wife and I was like, "This house isn't going to work." She was just like, "What? Well, it needs a lot of TLC, but I think we can do it and make it our own." I was like, "I'm not worried about that. Let me show you something." And I walked to the door frame, and the door frame was like right at my temple. Yeah, oh, so I have to duck. Yeah. We we have that house. That's where I'm at right now. Like I have to duck everywhere I go, and like I'll do something do stupid, know. and I'll go to walk into the bathroom, and then I just crack my head I off of something. It and it's just like it, it's not since I started this damn merch store. Like that's <laughs> now I hurt myself every time I do something stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's you know. Uh, you know, the day job's automotive based. I had an instructor tell me that you can't make something idiot proof. No. And the answer is, or he follows up with, you can only make something idiot resistant because the moment you idiot proof something, you meet a bigger idiot. Yeah. It's, it's like what, um, Ron White's old joke is you can't fix stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. The, man, it's, but I mean, we could we could riff on that for the rest yeah. of the night for sure. I'm just you know saying, what I mean? we're we're going to be limited on time here because we are running down near the end of yeah. the episode. I do have to get this segment in though, here, buddy. Yeah, go for and it. It is one of my favorite segments, and that is the Fast Fitty Five. Five random questions from the wonderful manager of the podcast, Johnny Fitty Falcone, and um, for the new listeners out there, these are kind of rapid fire. But you can elaborate if you need to. And I love the look on your face because I don't tell any guests about this segment uh, before right, the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's fun. Because if you could live in this man's mind, uh, you would have material for life. Um, I'm intrigued. And these have nothing to do with what we've been talking about for the entirety Perfect. of the hour that we've been on here. So if you are ready, buddy, we will. Yeah, fire away. I'm ready. All right. Question number one. Who wins in a fight? 10,000 rats versus five silverback gorillas locked inside of a racquetball court. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going silverback. I'm biased. I, I get it. I, 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 he sent these to me today, by the way, for the new yeah. listeners out there. I didn't get to pre-read these, but like a minute before we started. And I was looking, I was like, that's a good question. But, you know, yeah, I'm, going, I'm going gorillas. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, five silverbacks. I mean, racquetball dude, courts are small. Like that's. <laughs> I yeah, feel like they have like, an advantage. I mean, just stopping out be, like ten of them at a time. Yeah, they would have. It would have to be something where like it was like a pit. Like yeah. it would have to be. I, I, the only way the rats are winning, in my opinion, is if they are because you have to anticipate they're not turning on their fellow rat. Right. So I'm going silverback unless. I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about them, but there's enough rats there. I don't know if they're going to be able to see each other. Right. I, I get it. That's a solid answer. Question number two. Would you rather be Vinny from Jersey Shore or Vinny from My Cousin Vinny? Ooh. It's a tough one, I know. Yeah, man. I mean, I try to... I'm going Jersey Shore. All right, all right. Uh, is, I, I mean, you, I, you're, it's you're, a simpler life, man. I get it. it. You know, I don't have that. I don't. I don't have that simple life. A hundred percent with you on that one. I get it. Question number three: Which one of these guys wins in a fight against the other in a dark alley? Conor McGregor, Jake Paul, Steven Seagal, Kurt Angle. He didn't elaborate. Are we talking Steven Seagal now or like? He just says Steven Seagal. So yeah, man. That's... 
You know what? I'm going to say all in their prime just to kind of make this. Mm. Again, though, like, I mean, they're meeting all they're meeting each other in the alley at the same time. And it's just they're they're about it right now. Yeah. Ooh. It's the way I'm reading the question. Yeah, for sure. I'm Due to the lack of explanation of the thought, I'm going McGregor. Solid choice. That was my choice, too. Yeah. Uh, question number four, are baked or mashed potatoes better? Uh, see, you know, there's variety of that, but I'm going baked because it's, be- it's easier to doctor up a baked potato than mashed potatoes. You can easily have shitty mashed potatoes, but you can salvage a bad baked potato. Solid, solid. Question number five, would you rather go on a trip by train or boat? Oh, man, I'm not fucking patient for anything. Um, <laughs> the slowest forms of transportation. <laughs> dude, I'd want to fucking jump off of both. Like, like if I was on the Titanic, I'd be like, we need some adventure. Can we go towards that iceberg? Um, <laughs> dude, I can't sit still that long. I fucking hate both those choices. Um I'm going on train because if I had to sit on a boat and just look at water, I think I'd get pissed off. Like, yeah, okay. I, I would say boat because, you know, he didn't specify what type of boat. I'm going, I'm thinking like cruise liner. Like, you can get up and go to like a bar or a restaurant. Like, you could, there's places to go, but I get what you're saying though. Yeah, but like if you're, if you're, if, if we're talking about a form of transportation, like you can get up and move around on a train too. You know, That's like true. They, they got they got dining cards and stuff like that. So, I mean, like I, you have options. Obviously, you're a little bit more limited on a train, but at least like the scenery is changing. So, like if you're telling me that, like, I'm going from like mainland to mainland across the ocean, like. It had been more entertaining to ask Buddy Holly if he wanted to fly, but, um, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, no, I, I, I think I'm going train just for the fact that, like, you could at least. If you were bored, you could look at the changing scenery. I get you. I'm, I'm I'm not mad at that answer either. But yeah, this wow, he brought the thunder for these ones, buddy. I'm not going to yeah. lie to you here. Like those were some yeah. of the more elaborate questions that he's yeah. he's come up with in a long dude, time. The, dude, the baked and mashed potato one, like that's because I mean I've had terrible boats. You know what yeah. I mean, like. Yeah, see, and, uh, I, my wife's full Irish, so like, there's potatoes in every meal that we have. Like, there, that's yeah. not even an option. Like, we're yeah. getting we're getting potatoes, like no matter <laughs> what it is. Um, so yeah, but that was the fast fifty five. That's I like it. That's it's a fun way we've come to to end the show. We were thinking about it back in season one when we started the show. Uh, well, when he came out of the show, and I was like, you know what, I, I was just on one of my buddies podcast and he uh he had a really interesting way to end the show and he came up with like the mount rushmore of and it was whoever he was talking to like me was a comedian so it was the mount rushmore of comedy and comedians and it was like oh that's a that's a loaded question but that's let's roll with it so i was like i want to come up with something like that and i was like dude wait a minute you come up with the most random questions every day Mm -hmm. and he was like Dude, it's called the Fast Fifty Five, and I'll come up with my. I'll get just say some of my random questions because, like, that silverback gorilla question with the rats and like the Conor McGregor yeah. question are questions he asks me on a daily basis. Like, this is how this man's mind works. I love Dude. him to death. I love yeah, him. Yeah, it's fantastic. I've, I've known him since college, and he would come up to me like in college, he'd be like, "All right, Bond, I've got another one for you," and just be like, "All right." Uh, Batman, Conor McGregor, and a gorilla are trapped in a racquetball court. Who wins? It's like racquetball, or is it a fight? Like I need, like, what are we talking here? Like, and yeah, we would get into these heated debates, like just off of these yeah. fucking questions. <laughs> so fantastic. we came up with the Fast Fifty Five. Dude, that's great. And I don't tell guests, especially that haven't listened to the show or anything like that, or that you know. That that's gonna happen because I want to see their genuine reaction. <laughs> yeah, that's great. No, that's a awesome. lot of people are like, "Wait a minute, you didn't tell me about this before when we were going our pre-show prep." I was like, "Yeah, it was on purpose. Like that's yeah. <laughs> it's 100 yeah. on purpose." Those are great. 
But all right, buddy, we are running down near the end of the show. I give every guest this opportunity at the end of the show. If there's anything you want to get out there, whether it's for your beard care company, your comedy yeah. career, anything like that, I'm going to give you about a minute, man. The floor is yours. Well, uh, the beard care is simple. Uh, you can find me on buddiesbeardcare.com. Uh, we also have Facebook and Instagram under Buddies Beard Care. The comedy stuff, I got must be the buddy on Instagram and TikTok. And Facebook, it's uh, Buddy Holly Comedy. And for based off when this show's airing, uh, my next uh, beard care event's going to be in May. If you follow me on social media, you'll be able to find me there. I'll be at the Ashland County Fairgrounds here in Ohio. Um, for hold on, let me double check those dates here so I don't mix that up. Um, yeah, the 11th, the 10th and the 11th. Um, so right after Cinco de Mayo. All right. That is right. You got anything else? Nope, I'm good, man. All right. Appreciate you. That was Buddy's Beer Care, and that is going to do it for this episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. Again, I want to thank my guest, Buddy Holly, for joining and his beard, because I feel like there is a tag team coming on on the show. It is uh, phenomenal, and I wish I could grow mine that long, but I don't have the patience. Um but as always, if you enjoyed the show, be a friend, tell a friend. If you didn't, tell them anyways. They might like it just because you didn't. That's going to do it for me, and I will see y'all next week. The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Dubby Energy. Energy drinks made for gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. For gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. Go to the link in the description where you can find the best energy drinks out there. Less caffeine than a cup of coffee. Also, no jitters and no crash afterwards. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my favorite sponsor of the show, and that is Shankit Golf. Golf apparel made for the everyday golfer. We might not go out and shoot a six under par. We're probably going to shoot a six over par. But this is going to give us the gear that's going to help us rock it on and off of the course. Go to the link in the bio. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off there as well.